All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Nerdcore Podcast. This is your one and only source for all things nerdy, whether it be video games, comic books, TV shows, whatever you need. We got your back. I am your host, as always. My name is Matt Hedrick, and here with me is my good friend, Mr. Chad Porto. How are you, sir? Yo. That's that's all I got. <laughs> that's the excitement factor coming in there. So what do we got on the show this week, Matt? We got a couple of things on tap for you. We're going to talk about how a guy is enough of an idiot to go and try to escape prison and then want to play Call of Duty. We're going to talk about some talented people wanting to make a new Turtles game. And then apparently you've watched some uh, zombie movies or something you wanted to talk about as well. Yes, but we're going uh, to start with, with the zombie game thing. Because I did this out of order. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I'm guessing so. <laughs> so, uh, new Resident Evil Netflix animated series will, will be debuting. The voice actors of the RE2 remake will be back. Uh, Nick Apost... Uh, God damn it, Greeks. Nick Apost... Greeks. Nick- You'll get there. Apostolatus, uh, Apostolatus, Nick Greek dude, and Stephanie Panizelio. Panizelio. Why are these names so hard? Nick and Stephanie. Panicello and Apostolatus. Ah, oh, Italians and Greeks, Italians and Greeks, Italians and Greeks. word jumble. <laughs> I mean... We Mediterraneans, we really, we really know how to fuck with the rest of the English language. I'm Steve Smith. I'm John Johnson. I'm Stephanie Panzalello. Oh, good. Hey, thanks for thanks for joining the club, Italians. We appreciate it. You're welcome, world. We gave you art and terrible, hard to pronounce names. The names aren't terrible. They're just terribly hard to pronounce. And you got like. Michelangelo, like, thank, thank God you guys were, were fucking, uh, uh, um, you know, super into turtles. Otherwise, we'd, we'd all be screwed. Uh, it, it, it is, it is, it is a thing. So, we, uh, I'm just getting a, a, a notification on my computer that I will not restart now. You cannot tell me to restart now. I won't restart now. Anyway, so Penzello and Apos, uh, Apos, Nick, they're they're back. I apologize for butchering their names. I'm not trying to. It's just it's, that's how it's coming out. Uh, they're doing. Uh, they're they're Claire and Leon's again. Uh, it says here uh, from the summary. 2006. There were traces of improper access to secret presidential files found in the White House's network. American federal agent Leon S. Kennedy is among a group invited to the White House to investigate this incident. But when the lights suddenly go out, Leon and SWAT team are forced to take down a horde of murderous zombies. Meanwhile, Tara, faves, Tara safe staff member Claire Redfield encounters a mysterious image drawn by a youth in a country she visited while providing support for refugees. Haunted by this drawing, which appears to be a victim of a viral infection, Claire starts her own investigation. The next morning, Claire visits the White House to request the construction of a w- welfare facility. There, she has a chance reunion with Leon and uses the opportunity to show him the boy's drawing. Leon soon realizes that some sort of connection between the zombie outbreak at the White House and the strange drawing, but he tells Claire that there is no relation and leaves. Why are we giving away the whole plot in the summary? <laughs> in time... I watch the movie at this point. <laughs> right? In time, these two zombie outbreaks in distant countries lead to events that shake the nation to its very core. Ooh, they're related? Originally thought to be a movie, Infinite Darkness will be an animated series produced by Japanese studios TMS Entertainment, uh, who did uh, movies like Akira, Lupin, or I'm sorry, not not series. Uh, some of these are series. One of these is definitely a movie. Akira, Lupin the Third, those are both series. And then Little Nemo is a movie. Uh, and will be animated by Japanese studio Queb, Queb, Quebeco? Cubico? I just found out that Japanese and Swedish pronounces Ikea, Ikea. So I don't know how they fucking pronounce words over there. Really? That's weird. Right? It starts with an I. <laughs> why are you going to... Make fucking sense. Like, like, why is the rest of the world like not on par with, 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 with fucking phonetics? Like, come on. So, that, so now the I is silent? What the fuck? Apparently. I, I before E, except for in Sweden. 
It's set for release date in 2021. Uh, Infinite Darkness isn't the only Resident Evil content coming to North Netflix. Uh, they're also doing the live action series, which is going to have some stuff and other things. I don't know. I'm not really that excited about the live action series when I saw the cast. Some of them I like, some of them I don't. We'll see. I, it might be a really good series. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm not going to see it. In accuracy. Like, no, I'm not going to be that guy. But I will tell you, like, if I'm not hyped about something, I'm not hyped about something. So, you know, that's uh, just how it is. Uh, Matt, thoughts on this is zombies? Yeah, um, I'm interested in it now. The only thing I remember about anything White House related with Resident Evil was when they was when Leon was escorting like the president's daughter or something like that in the fourth game, right? Sixth game too. There was an outbreak at the White House. They oh, killed, okay. or well, so, well, maybe it wasn't the White House. It was in D.C. I remember that. Okay. Yeah, I, I do. Have, I do have some interest in this. Um, I have actually seen one of the animated movies before. It was like a CG thing. I can't remember the name. I think it's I've like, seen all of them. Started with a D. It started with a D. Was it like Degeneration? Maybe. Yeah, or something? That, that's one of them. Okay. Yeah, I actually have that on DVD or something. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. It's some cheesy fun action. And if this can, this series can do the same thing and deliver on that, on um, you know that, and with telling a semi decent story, I'd be down to watch it. It's. Probably not going to, I would assume probably not more than like, what, like six episodes, maybe 10. Probably it, it, it'd probably that. be the same length as Castlevania, I'd imagine. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. If As long as it just keeps pacing like, you know, same way as like those movies did, I'm, I'm all for it. Do you have any like interest in anything like this, like animated wise, or are you feeling the same way as like the live action? No, I'm, I'm more excited about this for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so here, from the plot on RE6, it says on Jan uh, J the tw J 29th of June. On June 29th, you fucking heathens. Flip that shit. 2013, U.S. President Adam Benford attempts to publicly reveal the truth behind the 1998 Raccoon City incident and the government's dealings with Umbrella to end further bioterrorist activity. However, the venue in the American town of Tall Oaks is hit by another attack, infecting the president. I am not a zombie. The, Zol the sole survivors, DSO agent and Raccoon City survivor Leon S. Kennedy and United States Secret Service agent Helena Harper are forced to kill the president. Oh, no. The pair encounter the real Ada Wong, because there's a fake Ada Wong, and Leon learns that the National Security Advisor Derek Simmons uh, is affiliated with the Neo Umbrella and was responsible for the attack. Leon and Helena pursue Simmons into... La Lanshang, China, while faking their deaths. Meanwhile, Jake and Sherry escape captivity in Lanshang. Uh, the movies are Degeneration. I was thinking you were going there. Thank you. Then we also have Damnation. And then we have the best one, Vendetta. <laughs> Vendetta's... F Dude, all right. So, I just kicked something. Ah, oh, my ankle. Mm, that, that was uh, that, that was right on the bone. Ah, what did you kick? My chair. Ooh, mm. not good. Yeah, this is uh, sore. So, if I remember correctly, Damnation has the epic battle between a bunch of liquors and the tyrants. Mm. That was pretty cool. Um, that was about all I remember from that movie, though. <laughs> I think the generation has, like, a big fight thing in, like, an airport or something. Yeah, the opening, like, 20, 30 minutes is in an airport. Okay. If I remember correctly. S some sexy little, uh, stewardesses and whatnot. Mm. Just, just how it is. Uh, the third one, though, is bonkers as hell, because the, the final, um, uh, few minutes, one, it's a Leon and Chris movie, so already right there. I'm, I'm already on board. Literally, Leon saves the day by riding his motorcycle up a skyscraper stairwell. Or maybe he was in the, the elevator. And he, and he battles the, the new tyrant villain thingy on top of a building with his motorcycle. Oh, that's badass shit. Dude. Yeah, it is. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. cool. Oh, it's, it's the best. <laughs> We don't have to be scary anymore. We can be passionate and say it. It's just good. Oh, it's great. I love it. So de definitely all three are worth it. Like you, You're, you're going to find different reasons to like or dislike them. Uh, the third one has Chris Redfield, Leon, and Rebecca Chambers from RE0 and 1. 
I think that's like the first thing she's been in since the games. So that was cool. Uh, the second one only has Leon and Ada, and then the first one has just Claire and uh, Leon. And, and all the other characters are for the movies specifically. So the one I watched was the second one then? No, you watched the first one. The oh, first okay. one had the airport because the, the first one had Jill like going somewhere in the airport. Like she was like, about to leave and then like a zombie. Bro- not Jill, Claire. Why am I saying Jill? Claire was in the first one. And that was the one that had Claire like she was about to go somewhere with like a senator, I think, or runs into a senator. And then like a little girl pops up and then zombie. That's right. Yeah. And then everyone's like, we're going to fucking die hard this bitch. And then a bunch of people are like, well, we're just going to die. And they're like, no, it's, it's got to be Bruce Willis. And then no one injected themselves out of a fighter plane. So, like, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't, like, Die Hard 2. But it's close enough, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's close enough. So, yeah. Oh, the, Dem, Dem's the animated movies. Looking forward to the animated series. The animated series, I don't think, is in conjunction with the animated movies. Maybe it fits somewhere in the middle because this is going to be 2006 and the animated movies are... Um, the animated movies are supposed to be in conjunction with the, with the game. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's canon anymore. We, we, we've, we've expanded too much in one direction. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know anymore. Uh, Resident Evil, anything's possible, man. So. Yeah, to a point. So the next one up... Uh, the, uh, Scott Pilgrim, the game developers are making a new retro TMNT game. Uh, there's mm-hmm. already a, a reveal trailer on YouTube. Matt, I don't have any thoughts on this, but I know Turtles is a big thing for you, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak on how you feel about this. Um, I'm completely down for it. It actually took me completely by surprise. I was just scrolling through Twitter, and I happened to see this pop up. Um, it's being worked on by some, a few of the developers, like you said, from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game. Um, it's also being published by the same publisher of the of Streets of Rage 4. Um, and I'm definitely down for the sprite work and the animation and stuff like that. The it, um, it's it's another four player cooperative beat 'em up, and um, it's supposedly supposed to be like a kind of sequel to Turtles in Time because that's the last kind of arcade-ish type of game you got from this. Uh, and I, I hope it's got a lot of unlockables and different things like that, like um, how the that fan-made game was a, a couple years back called uh, Rescue Palooza, which if anybody's a fan of the series, you should definitely check that out. It's well worth playing. Um, I really hope I really hope they expand on it here and have some unlockable characters. I'd love to play as like Usagi Ojimbo. I would love to play maybe not as all of them. I know they showed April in the trailer. Maybe play as her. But no, I'm I'm down for it, and I I can't wait I can't wait to see it. And the whoever whoever does the animation for these things, these intros for these games, like at, over there at uh, Tribute is man, they they need a raise because that just took me straight back into the night into the nineties and that. That better be like the intro to the game itself, because that was pretty hype, and I'm totally down for it. No release date yet, but I believe you can wishlist it on Steam at the moment, but it's supposed to be on everything, all consoles and stuff, and I'm hoping this year, but we'll see. So you know me and beat-em-ups. I I think they're interesting to a point, but they can be very repetitive. Hmm. But I will say this, um, the, the, you know, it's the same style, but it's updated. So, like, you know, the intro, it's just like the arcade for whatever that one was. Because it wasn't Turtles in Time that, that I saw in the arcade. It was whatever the TMNT arcade cabinet game was, whatever that one was. Same intro to that. Same intro to the, uh, the, the first cartoon, but much more polished, a lot more detailed. Maybe not detailed, but, but it's more vibrant. Same style, same energy, just better. Uh, the 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 sprites great. The the backgrounds fantastic. I love the uh, the HUDs for each of the characters. But the best thing in this entire trailer is like you see like Leo. Ah, I'm running like a badass rap. I'm running like a real badass, Donnie. I'm running like kind of a badass. And you got Mikey. Well, ain't up for me, guys. And it's the funniest fucking animation <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Cause he's cause he's so happy just to be there. Not even happy. He's just ah! <laughs> he's running like a dork. I love it. Oh, it, 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 like they got the um, they they got the, the, There's a lot the of mannerisms. Here, yes, they yes. Do. They got the mannerisms down. Like like Raph is running like he's looking for a fight. Leo's running like he's looking 
to you know protect people. Donnie's looking like he's like sizing things up, and then Mikey's just like ah, and it's the funniest shit. I love it. It's so cool. Uh, yeah. So if you're a fan of the retro stuff, it it, it should definitely be up your alley. Um, fantastic looking animation. Like this is already a five. Like I I <laughs> I don't see how this game doesn't get a five from us in, in the in, in it's the gonna graphics. Be, it, it, it's gonna be a banger, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun to play. Like, I, it might be simplistic, but you're gonna have a good time. I like the uh, the 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 foot sitting at the desk, and they just like rip off their suits, and they're like, "Ah, we're gonna fight now." And I'm like, "That's dumb. I love it. It's so dumb. It's so hokey." So definitely keep an eye out for that one. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. So we we gotta talk about this story because like, ugh. I don't always like talking about uh, video game stuff because we're trying not to be a video game podcast specifically. Mm. But this one's too dumb yeah. not to talk about. Uh, an escaped <laughs> prisoner was arrested when he came out of hiding to buy a copy of Fallout Duty Black Ops Cold War. Oh, okay. he's, he's a dummy. <laughs> so 36-year-old Clint Butler. Ah, non-Mediterranean names. Thank you. <laughs> I say this as a Mediterranean an idiot, myself. but at least it's easy to pronounce. <laughs> right? I say this as a Mediterranean man myself, so I can get away with it. Uh, Clint Butler had been serving 17-year extended sentence for crimes including robbery and firearm offenses, which was due to finish in 2024. Dude had two and a half years to go. Ugh. According to the West Midland Police, Butler managed to flee HMP Spring Hill Open Prison in Bucking- Buckinghamshire. Why? In no, it's, it's like, we're going to call this Bucking. How about Buckingham? No, how about Buckinghamshire? How about Buckinghamshire Smithton? I can't wait for the next name change, you, you, you Brits. Uh, he had been a wanted man ever since escaping in November. According to the police, the armed robber was eventually caught in January when he visited uh, Birmingham City Center and PC's Mark Owen. Uh, this is just poorly written, sorry. Uh, according to the police, the armed robber was eventually caught in January when he visited Birmingham City Center. PC's Mark Owen and Allison Britton spotted him, and a friend, cha- uh, a friend changed direction when they saw the officers. God, who wrote this article? <laughs> An idiot, apparently. So here's how it should say. According to the police, the armed robber was eventually caught uh, in January when he visited Birmingham City Center. PC's, which is what they call police officers over there, Mark Owen and Allison uh, Brown spotted him and a friend who changed directions when they saw the officers approaching. See? See? Come on. Who's your editor? Easy. I want to have a conversation with them. PC Owen asked Butler why he was in town during a lockdown, and his friend replied, I've come to get the new Call of Duty because I can't sit around in lockdown. However, as shown in the police video, when PC Owen asked for Butler's details, he lashed out and attacked the officers before he was uh, incapacitated by pepper spray and arrested. Not nice. See, you're just dumb at that point. <laughs> According to the police, Butler's now back behind bars. He was jailed for 13 months for uh, absconding from prison and six months consecutively for assaulting the officers. So that's another, if, if, if I'm reading this correctly, six months consecutively for each charge. There's at least two charges, so he's got another 24 months. Good job. In a statement, uh, I think this is supposed to be superintendent, uh, which is a uh, ranking, if I remember correctly, in British police Superintendent Nick Rowe called Butler's decision to risk capture by going into town to buy Call of Duty idiotic. This was great work by officers acting on instinct. That uh, was something not quite right and then challenging the men. The situation escalated really quickly, but both PCs put their training to good effect to good effect by restraining Butler, subduing him, and getting him safely in handcuffs while also calling for backup from officers nearby. So here's, here's two points of contention. One, I don't think he was in town to buy uh, Call of Duty. Two, he wasn't in town to buy Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> so, secondly... Can I, throw another, can I throw another one in there just, just to just not yet. say good? Not yet. Secondly, okay. the friend even admits I was there to buy Call of Duty. So, the headline's misleading. Firstly, if it's during lockdown and they're being approached by police officers, you can infer that no one was supposed to be in town, so why were they coming to town to buy Call of Duty when they knew that the town was closed? They were there for far more nefarious reasons. But that ain't a good headline. What's your, what's your third? Uh, my third is they're talking about the great work that the police did, and uh, I've seen this video. The dude, the police didn't need to do anything, and he tried to kick him, and he fell. Kick? So they, they could have caught him anyway. 
so yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> I don't think all over a game that has the same damn fucking release every year just with a new coat of paint. Congratulations. He uh, he could have just downloaded it. I, I'm sure he's got some stolen credit cards somewhere. He could have just bought it right off of the thing. I mean, maybe, maybe not, but he, you know, it could. If they if they were actually gonna buy the game, they could have just downloaded it. So, you know, what 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 are you gonna do? So apparently, be an idiot and get caught. <laughs> so we're gonna shift gears a bit. I, uh, for some reason, I decided to start watching videos on YouTube from what, was it, what culture horror. Um, I don't know why. I saw a video that kind of piqued my attention. I was like, all right, I'll watch. Then I watched like thirty more. But most of them were, like, zombie-themed. And, and, like, I'm not a big horror guy. But I, I do enjoy some of the more tantalizing horror flicks. Like, like not so much the dark and macabre. Well, actually, more the dark and macabre. Not so much the gory and violent. Like, I, I like, I like okay. the ones that kind of, like, linger with you. I like not so much horror as it is a really compelling story with horror elements. Horror doesn't yeah, scare I get you. me. Like, like, two movies in the history of horror have ever scared me. Fucking uh, the ring. Hmm. Just and it wasn't even the movie; it was the video they watched in the movie. Like that okay. was like it, I forget what they called. It. It's like um, uh, shit. It, it, it's some. It's a specific type of horror that's designed to upset you because of of the imagery, not so much scare you. Uh, and then there was the um, Science fiction horror film Event Horizon, which to this day I can't watch because Jesus Christ. <laughs> I haven't watched it since I was like ten or eleven or twelve. But like, I'll tell you what, it, it, I, I could probably watch that movie and be fine now, and like erase that horrid memory from my conscience. But on the off chance that I can, I'm not gonna watch it just to be late safe. You know, like you know, uh, yeah, maybe that dinosaur fence isn't electrified anymore, but I'm uh, I'm not gonna touch it. I got played so that like, game once so before. Like blatant, 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 gory horror just doesn't really do much for you, then, huh? It, it's not so much that it doesn't do much for me. It's that it doesn't resonate for me. I, I, I don't watch anything for any other reason than the story. I need mm. a good story. Um, I've watched plenty Same. of of slasher flicks and horror movies, and I'm just like, I they're bad stories. Like every Friday the Thirteenth, or or you know the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, or Halloween's, like they're all bad stories. They're oh, just yeah. they're just people doing sex things, then getting murdered. Like I, I, it's dumb. Like the first Saw, as violent as it was, was a really compelling story. It was a, it was a great whodunit. And then mm-hmm. the twist ending, I was like, oh my god, that was like easily the best twist ending I've ever seen in my life. Easily. But there are so many other, like, versions of horror films that just, like, don't, you know, hit with me. And, like, there's ones that, like, do disturb me. Like, um, Heredity. Her- Heredity. Her- 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 Hereditary? I think it was Hereditary. Uh, with with uh, Tony Collette. And, like, that one, like, it wasn't so much it was scary. It was, like, the the last ten minutes were just a visual barrage of horrifying imagery that was done exceptionally. Because I was just like, oh, Jesus, I'm never watching this again. <laughs> Like, I no think thank there's you. only one that's ever I've ever resonated with in like recent times. Like what's, what's that? Over so, uh, Sinister. You ever remember that? You ever hear that movie? The uh, Ethan Hawke movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's well, like he's watching the like the reels of like all these different people getting killed and how they do it. And the, the, I always thought the brilliant part of that movie was the fact that they never fully showed everything. It was always just these really qu- qu- quick like little clips of things. You would see you would see the after effect, but not the initial kill or anything. And it was always it was always fucking with him, and it just kept messing with him over time to the point of where, you know, they did eventually reveal it, but it wasn't so like, it wasn't so gory that you were like, oh come on, this is over the top. No, it was. I always felt like it was very good at like psychological horror, and that's why I enjoyed it quite a bit. I, th- I think it's funny that the one movie that you like is like critically panned by everyone. <laughs> I'm sure there's movies. I'm sure there's movies like that that you not so much that one, but that you've liked over the years that have been critically panned that you've enjoyed. I'm sure there is. Oh yeah, but but mine are great. <laughs> there's the difference. Um, so so I bring all that up to to bring up the fact that uh, it inspired me to watch some Zimbabwe movies. Now, 
I've seen quite a few in my life. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite. I'm, I'm, pr- I'm sure there's probably one. And, like, I don't know exactly, like, what one would define as a zombie movie. Like, Babysitter, or, or what was it? Babysitter 2 or, or something like that. The, the Return of the Queen or Queen Bee or something like that. Technically, killer, killer Queen. Killer Queen. Of. Technically, those are, are undead, redead human beings. So, like, I don't know if they qual- qualify as zombies or demons or what have you. I like that movie. It's a good movie. Um, They're fun as fuck. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> you found my balls. Good job, dude. <laughs> You haven't seen you haven't seen a lovely look at black man before. Come on. <laughs> so oh, th- those were great flicks. Uh, I rewatched uh, Warm Bodies. I-, I saw it w- when it came out. I was like, all right, this is this is charming. But I hadn't revisited it and and watching all these what culture zombie uh, videos. You know, they talked very highly of it. I'm like, you know, it was good, but was it really that good? Now listen, the cast is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> that's that's right off the bat. Well, let me pull up the cast real fast because uh, I don't remember all the names. So you have Nicholas Holt who plays Beast in the X Men films, uh, the newer X Men films. You have Teresa Palmer who played the love interest Julie. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people w- will recognize her. She looks kind of like uh, Amber Heard, only she's not like a giant pile of crap like Amber Heard. Palmer was in one movie you may have seen called Take Me Home Tonight with. Um, to, uh, Topher Grace. It's set in the 80s. Oh, yeah, I've, heard, I've seen that movie. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. the love interest in that. Um, then Rob Corddry's in this, and he, he's been in a bunch of things. <clears throat> There's Dave Franco, and even though he actually... I, I forgot how many scenes he was in, and this isn't so much a spoiler alert, because I think they show it in the trailer, but uh, Dave Franco gets killed in the first 10 minutes of the film. <laughs> but he sticks around in different ways. So I, I always forgot about the, the, the fact that he was still in the movie after he dies. But I'm always like, why do they say starring Dave Franco when he's not in the movie that long? And then I you know, rewatched it. I was like, all right. Technically not in the movie, but technically in the movie. So I guess that makes sense. Uh, then there's Annalie Tipton, who a lot of people may not recognize, but she was in what was it, Crazy Stupid Love with um, Steve Carell and uh, Ryan Gosling, Julianne Moore, Emma Stone, and Kevin Bacon. Oh, and Marissa Tomei was in that as well. And I loved her in that. She played the babysitter. For um, mm-hmm. uh, da, 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 uh, what was the fuck is his name? Um, Steve Carell, and she's like in love with him, but she's like seventeen, and he, he's in his forties and going through a divorce. Like it's it's a very dumb but silly movie. She's great in that. Um, mm-hmm. Corey Hardick, uh, he really didn't have a big role in Warm Bodies, but he he's given a, a starring credit. And then Jan Malkovich plays kind of like the human antagonist. It's a fun movie. Uh, kind of gives you a different take on zombies. Like um, it kind of describes zombies more or less as still sentient but un- incapable of being human, like they used to be. Like they can still think, they still have thoughts, they still have like you know like ideas and things like that, <clears throat> and they can still express themselves. But it's very difficult. And the longer you're a zombie, the more you start to decay and lose your humanity. When you lose your humanity completely, you become something called what I think it was called like bones. Bonesies or, or, the, or the boned, something like that. It's basically just a bunch of skeletons at that point. I dig the concept mm-hmm. already, man. It sounds awesome. Yeah, so it's like, so, so it's like a degree of, of differing zombies. So basically Nicholas Holt's character, who he can't remember his name, so he just calls himself R, uh, basically falls in love with Julie. Like, like, so, so Julie's part of like a small group of, of um, supply runners. Like They're trying to scrap for so, uh, medical supplies that Dave Franco's running. And, you know, she's like, you know, we've been here too long. We got to go. And Dave's like, no, no, no. We, we got to get these medical supplies. And all of a sudden, uh, our little zombie crew show up to eat. <laughs> and everyone just starts mm. getting eaten. But then R sees Julie and just starts, like, having, like, those, like, slow, like, everything is awesome, like, beautiful moment music. And he's, like, you know, just, like, falling in love. And then Dave Franco shoots him. <laughs> and then R's like, I'm going to eat you now, bitch. So the movie. Oh, uh, dude, I'm in. I am in already. <laughs> right. So the movie progresses from there. R has fallen in love with Julie already, and he protects her essentially. Like he he marks her with his decayed, decrepit ass blood. So like because of like the the corpses as they're called, like like the human looking zombies smell. Like that's they're they, they're smelling for the sense of human. So he masks her and protects her, and the movie goes on from there. And and it's really cool how they do the progression of <clears throat> R from his 
you know, not mindless zombie state, but but OG zombie state to how they do them at the end of the film. It's it's very much a a rom com teen romance kind of situation, but it's very fun, a little outlandish, and and, and does put a spin on the zombie archetype that I don't think has been tackled anywhere else. The movie didn't have the strongest of reviews when it came out, but it, it, like a lot of movies have uh, gained uh, cult status. It has uh, kind of started to come around in recent years without the burden of expectation kind of following it. So it's definitely a winner if you, if you want to check it out. Plus, you know, just great cast up and down. There's even a great scene where Annalie Tipton pulls a gun on John Malkovich, and he's like, you're not going to shoot me. And she's like, no, I guess not. <laughs> it's just the, the comedic timing is fantastic. Um, the other one I saw, uh, I, I've never even heard of. Um, it, it's called um, Life After Beth. <laughs> and it actually has, like, the best three-punch combo for a movie I've seen in some time. Like, I, you've never heard of this movie, have you? No, I haven't. I, I know you haven't because I haven't heard of it. <laughs> but here's the cast. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza plays Beth. Dave okay. H- 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 he- Han, Dave Dehan. Uh, uh, I'm not too familiar with a lot of his work. Dane, but Dane DeHaan, I think you're De- thinking of. DeHaan, yeah. He's been in the Cure for Wellness Chronicles, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Valerian and the City of whatever it was called. Um, so he's been in a bunch of movies that have just fucking flopped. John C. Riley, Molly Shannon, oh, okay, Matthew Dude. Gray Gubler, Gubler from uh, he was in Alvin and the Chipmunks and he was also in uh, Criminal Minds. Uh, there's Anna Kendrick. There's Paul Reiser. Uh, let's see. Should I gotta see this movie. Matthew, uh, we already talked about him. Uh, Aaliyah, wait, she is she in this movie? I don't remember her in this movie. Aaliyah Sh- Shockart. I don't remember her at all in this movie. Sh- Shock hat. <clears throat> um, let's see. There's Jim O'Hear, who played um, Jerry in Parks and Rec. Um, there's Gary Marshall. Um, let's see. Who else we got? Uh, there's one more. Who, who's, the, who's the chick? Cheryl Hines. That's what I'm thinking of. She was also in this as well. So like, this is like a real loaded up cast. Basic story, <clears throat> Beth, played by Aubrey Plaza, gets bit by a snake while hiking. She went alone because her now ex-boyfriend, Zach, doesn't want to do anything that she wants to do, so she feels very much like she is, is kind of alone in this relationship, so she breaks up with him, but she gets bit. By the time people get to her, she's already dead. So the movie starts with her funeral. And, you know, um, Zach and her father, uh, Mar- uh, Maury, played by John C. Riley, start talking about her, and it's... It's supposed to be a dark comedy, and I don't think it hits all the ways it should, but it does set itself up nicely, and and it throws you right into the action. Um, Zach is very much uh, regretful about how the relationship ended. This is kind of a plot point for the movie, you know, about how he views Beth and and how he's feeling. There's a lot of regret uh, uh, in the movie uh, from his point of view, and he even starts the movie by saying that there's a lot of things I didn't say to her when she was alive, but the movie kind of loses that. Um, obvious kind of notes for most of the movie until the end when when it comes back around. But if you remember what he says in the beginning, it doesn't remind you through the movie, but in the end it does pay off. So, so it, it does have some nice kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, finality to it. Uh, maybe the best part is Zach's brother, Kyle, played by uh, Matthew Gray Gubler. Kyle is a wannabe cop who works as a like a local um, community security officer. I think he's like you know part of the neighborhood watch. And he, <laughs> there's a scene where Zach's freaking out, and uh, you see Kyle like flip th- for his like his uh, utility belt or gun belt, and he pulls out his pepper spray. And you're like Zach, I'll I'll, t- I'll pepper spray you. And Zach's like, all right, all right, all right, all right, stop, stop, stop. And it's like so overblown and over dramatic, and Zach's just screaming at him. Uh, it's so it like, Kyle is the best part of this movie. But basically, Beth comes back to life. It's a zombie movie. Duh. There's no real in, uh, inclination as to why she came back to life. There's, like, a lot of um, kind of misnomers and a lot of red herrings as to, like, why she came back. In the end, I'm, I'm going to spoil this part for you just because it's not a spoiler. They don't ever tell you why. 
But mm. she's not the only one who eventually comes back, and it leads to a lot of shenanigans and some pretty funny bits. I think part of the problem with the movie, because it, it does kind of veer off at points, is that there's so much there that they opted not to go with. They spent maybe 20-odd minutes building up to like the big I'm not dead or I'm undead reveal, and in that time, you could have been doing so much more to bring into the movie. And then, like, they tried to show the couple again as, you know, with her now being undead. And I feel like at times they didn't do a good enough job of showcasing them as a couple and, and how, well, how well they got along. It felt more like he was in denial, which is, I guess, part of, of what you were going for with the story. But I think also when you're trying to sell a zombie romance, which is what this was, you need to really highlight why this couple was so good pre-death and why it's still good now. I think a better version of this movie is um, Digging Up My Ex, I think is what it's called. But I'll get to that one here in a second. Um, but basically, it's a movie about you know, Zach trying to deal with the fact that his girlfriend is now undead. And the, the, the one name I don't think I mentioned, or maybe I did, uh, Anna Kendrick's in this. <clears throat> and her character is like super into Zach because they used to be childhood friends. And, and I guess she you know, moved away or they grew apart. So when they reconnect randomly, um, and, and it's kind of like a throwaway, like the mom says, like, oh, guess who I talked to? And, like, you don't know who she means, but then you meet her. And, like, Anna Kendrick's so bizarre in this movie. Like, Zach, who's been dealing with his dead girlfriend, is like, can I just touch your skin? It's so flawless because he's dealing with a corpse <clears throat> now. So, like, any type of woman who's not undead is attracted to him. And Anna Kendrick's character is like, oh, my God, you're so interesting. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the movie. We need more Anna Kendrick reacting to the guy reacting to the zombie. Like, that's the movie. You had it. You, you figured it out. To be fair, if Anna Kendrick's saying that she's attracted to you, go with it. Go well, with not it. even just that. Like, like, it's just like the way she's reacting to everything is mm-hmm. just the best part. And, like, Zach's even like, because he had seen, like, his girlfriend and, like, his dead mailman all back. And, like, he, he asks uh, Anna Kendrick in the middle of this diner. Have you, uh, have you been seeing people that you haven't seen in a long time now back in your life? And Anna Kendrick like, gets all like nervous and she like looks around like, oh, oh, what do you know? And like she gets in real close and she goes, you mean like you? <laughs> <laughs> but she says it like so delicately, like, you mean like you? And like the way she says it, I'm just like, mm, why is this not the whole movie? She's so oblivious. I love it. So it's, it's very much a, a – uh, it, it has its moments. It's not a great flick, but it does have its moments. Um, <laughs> Aubrey Plaza is both hilarious, sad, and very dangerous in this movie. Um, she's definitely – her and Anna Kendrick definitely are um, the best parts about it. Uh, although I did like Zach, but I feel like you know there was just so much more opportunity in the script that they didn't go enough into. And I feel like that definitely hurt it. Um, yeah. But that, yeah. It seems like with like the, the cast that they had, too, it was like a missed opportunity with just how good of a cast they had. They could have done so much more to, with it, too, you know? Yeah, Molly Shannon's really funny in this, and Cheryl Hines has some of the best moments in, in the entire movie. So, like, there's definitely standout moments, but there's not a lot of standout can, you know, consecutive con- uh, connectivity. Like, like it, you're not going from great moment to great moment. There, there's little moments and bad moments that make the movie more enjoyable than it should be. But the best characters, Matthew Gray Gubler, or how you pronounce his last name, there's a scene, like because ap- obviously the zombies are coming back to life. Spoiler. Uh, there's a scene when things are really going sideways with, with everyone coming back. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what happens, but like, Kyle and Zach reconnect. And like the way <laughs> they reconnect, like just... <laughs> It's the funniest shit ever because it comes from out of nowhere. And, uh, like, the way Zach and Kyle kind of, like, uh, deal with one another is very much, say, uh, like a childish relationship, but they're both in their 20s. So it's very enjoyable, but it's just – it's it's the standout relationship in the movie. But the problem is I don't think it should have been. And I think that's kind of where I think the movie uh, loses its um, case for now, there's a movie just like it, but different, uh, called Burying the X. Uh, it stars a- the, the great late Anton Yelchin, uh, Ashley Green, who was in the, the Twilight movies, um, Oliver Cooper, who was in uh, Red Oaks and Californication. 
I think I kind of remember him in Californication. He's more like the um, the fuddy duddy best friend kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, the one I know is going to hook you is Alexandria Daddario, who is babelicious in anything she's ever done. So you know she's just <laughs> kind of fantastic. Uh, Minnie Robinson's also in this. Uh, let's see, um, Archie Han, um, Gabriel Christian. I don't know who some of these people are. But the movie is basically the same kind of premise. Uh, Anton Yeltsin's girlfriend, who's played by uh, Ashley Green, dies. And he's kind of like all broken up about it. And um, so it's just kind of one of, the, you know, one of those things where like, you know, he's very upset. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think he wishes her back to life or makes like some type of like slanted, like, I wish I could talk to her one more time or something like that kind of things. Uh, it says here on Wikipedia, Max unloads the latest shipment and finds a Satan genie that claims that if uh, it can grant anyone's wants or desires, believing it to just be another silly item for the shop he works at, Max places it on the shelf in storage and dismisses it. Um, at this point, I think he meets... Uh, oh, at this point, uh, she's not even dead. I need to rewatch this movie. This movie was good. Anyway, he ends up meeting Alexander Dario. The ex dies. The ex comes back. Now it's a love triangle with a zombie twist. It's fantastic. It's it's not like the greatest thing you'll ever see, but it definitely works the premise of like undead girlfriend back to life. How do I deal with it? A hell of a lot better. So yeah, I would recommend that movie over um, Life After Beth. Although I would recommend both movies just so you can kind of get the the comparison. I, th- mm. I, th- I, th- I think it works out pretty well. So with that, uh, let's uh, hop on into the YouTubes. Before we get into specific videos, I've been watching some new channels. I think those uh, some new ones, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I might subscribe to them too. So I already mentioned the uh, the the um, what culture horror. Uh, I don't know how I'll subscribe to that, um, but I also started. Like, I don't even know how I found this. I went on like a a binge of sorts of like small YouTube meme videos, like just like 15, 20 second stuff. Just like, oh, look, random mm. dog says, rah, rah, rah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that dog looks cute. Let's see, let's hear it. Oh, that's cute. And like, oh, tiger meows. I got to hear that. So I just went through a bunch of those. And eventually I found a channel called Jack O'Shea. I, I guarantee you these are supposed to be TikTok videos that he's uploading from TikTok to YouTube. Uh, that, that, there's like little 60-second, um, you know, 65-second comedy sketches. And uh, they're hilarious. Like the first one I saw was... Um, um, like some like uh, girl asks plumber to clean her pipes or something like that, and it opens oh, up like, like like a typical porn like you know like uh, do you think you can you know uh, um, um, clean my pipes and he's like and and the 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 guy's like yeah I can you know if you want you know they'll cost and she's like well, you think you can give me a, a bigger pipe and and he's like you already you know, got a one, you know, you're not really fitted for a two. I can give you a one five, but it's like a lot of money. I don't know why I would do that. And she's like, you know, <laughs> I, uh, you know, maybe I can clean your pipes. And the guy goes, ma'am, I'm a plumber. I can clean my own pli- pipes. And I was like, this is some funny shit. So I've been watching a bunch of those and, and some of them are really good. Some of them are, are hit and miss. <laughs> but the one that I, you know, like the, the, the best bit doesn't always end the, the segment, but the one that I, I lost my shit on was, the girl brought her dog like across the country to see her boyfriend, something like that. But he's like a drug mm. dealer, and she's like, "Yeah, I, I brought my dog." And and then the guy grabs the dog and goes, "Are you a cop? Why would they let a dog on a plane? <laughs> Are you a cop, dog? <laughs> Did you bring a cop in my house?" <laughs> and dog she's like, violence. I don't know. Yeah. Dog cops. And she's like, "No, no, no. You know, they let dogs fly now on planes with, with people in the in the passenger seat because people have anxiety flying." And, and the, the segment ends with him going, oh, so you're just a pussy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think it's him, his girlfriend, and, and the guy's brother. Like, like th- those are generally the three people in these little things. And, like, there's a great one where the guy's, like, to his brother, yeah, I think someone, I think my girlfriend's cheating on me. And, and the brother's like, well, why would you say that? He goes, I don't know, just stuff's always out of place. And, I, you know, I just... I, I, I just had this feeling, and, and the guy's like, you know, who do you think it is? And he goes, well, every time I, I come back and I find out, you know, that I think she's cheating, I know the doors are all locked, so what does that mean? And they're all, like, roommates, so the, 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 the other guy's like, oh, just, uh, maybe they're breaking in. He goes, oh, yeah, I thought about that, yeah. but, you know, the windows are always closed, too. And he goes, well, may, maybe he's able to close the windows or something like that. And it's obviously the, the third roommate who's cheating with, with the girlfriend, but the guy's so oblivious. It, 
Jack O'Shea. Watch the videos. They're fucking hilarious. At least some of them are. Um, th- th- there are they are going to be hit or miss, but th- I think they're short enough that I think you can like indulge on ten or twelve and, and get a kind of a grasp for his humor. Definitely works to a lot of degrees. Um, the other one I watched, I think you would actually be interested in. Uh, I mentioned them before. Triple Jump. They were a group of guys who were subsidiaries of What Culture back before. So a little, little history. What Culture was a big YouTube entity for the UK, and I think they also had, like, a website. Um, okay. But their big claim to fame was the wrestling channel. They had a very big, massive, and popular wrestling channel. About th- right. four years ago, five years ago, they started a wrestling promotion, What Culture Pro Wrestling, that was actually doing quite well. But they were spending a lot of money on talent, having a lot of great reviews, but not making a lot of money back. So eventually they decided that, you know, they wanted to go in a different direction with the wrestling promotion, and a lot of the guys who were doing the YouTube channel decided that they weren't really a big fan of the, uh, um, the, the, oh, the managerial process of, of the company, so they started their own company called, uh, what the hell is it called? Cultaholic. And so a lot of the more popular guys went over there, but then other guys started to develop in the wrestling side, and they went over to like the gaming side. There's guys from the wrestling side who went to the horror side and comic side and so on and so forth. Same thing that happened with Cultaholic happened with Triple Jump, where a bunch of the guys left, I think it was What Culture, and formed Triple Jump. So now they're doing their own gaming channel, and I was watching a bunch of videos. Basically, it was like uh, playing every launch title from, from a console. So like, you know, there's a, a 64 ch- uh, video, there's a PlayStation 1 ch- video, there's a GameCube video. I've I've seen them before. I've seen them pop up in my recommended feed. I'm gonna, I might have to check that out then. Well, I told you about them once before because they did a uh, ranking all the I don't know what it was. It was like ranking all the Superman games or something like that, or superhero games or something like that. Um, and yeah. I watched like a few of those, and I, I remember telling you about that because like there's like a minute and a half long. <laughs> but mm. <clears throat> um, th- yeah, these are much shorter. They're like twenty odd minutes. Uh, and they just have, they, I just found a new one. Uh, every handheld console ranked from worst to best, I think is what it's called. So, hmm. been watching them. I would highly recommend those. Oh, I, I don't remember what the other ranking ones were. Hang on. I'm doing a quick little deep dive. Well, I've been playing, I've been playing a lot more like handheld and like retro stuff anyway. So maybe seeing them play all like launch titles and stuff like that might, pique my interest into what different games maybe I can try out for these systems that maybe I, you know, either haven't heard of or maybe they're better than I thought they were. Uh, or, they're, they're covering right now just the more popular since systems and all the launch games with them for, for this series of mm-hmm. videos, but it's but this story pretty good. Uh, every video game movie ranked worst to best uh, I watched before. <clears throat> um, I don't think that was one I, re- I recommended. Every WWE video game ranked from worst to best I watched. That one I, I know I recommended to someone. <laughs> There's hmm. actually a video with Cat Icarus. What uh, Bloodborne means to me, featuring Cat Icarus. Hmm. Yeah. He's not a part of Triple Jump, so this was, uh, I guess, a collaborative uh, uh, effort. Uh, I know there's one more from best to worst or worst to best. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 definitely a channel worth checking out if, if you're interested. There's oh god, every Virtual Boy game ranked from worst to best. <laughs> oh lord, that's gonna be a short video. <laughs> Twenty eight minutes, so you'd be wrong. Oh <laughs> damn, there was only I think there was only like. 20-something games for it in the first place, so that's literally like a game a minute. Yep. Damn. Oh, here's the one I, I recommended. This is the one I, I definitely remember watching. It's every video game console ranked from worst to best. That one's an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> so Can the Virtual Boy just be like, like at the dead last, dead bottom? Because I played that thing, and the only thing I ever did is give me eye strain and headaches. There are worse consoles than Virtual Boy. Not many, but there are. So, what have you been watching on the YouTubes? Oh, it's been a rather uh, short week, but I'll give you a couple of things. Um, SNES Drunk, he did a couple of good videos. Um, I really, uh, the Shadow for the Super Nintendo, I didn't even know it was a thing. I do like seeing unreleased games, though, and 
I didn't even know this was a movie. Apparently, this is a really critically panned movie, to my knowledge. And um, the thing I get hung up with with beat 'em ups, especially what he was saying, is that the levels stretch out too long. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that I don't think that's something that I can appeal with. I I don't I don't think beat 'em up the stages in beat 'em up should be more than like maybe a few minutes at a time, maybe like three to five minutes max. They he said they were going on for like ten or fifteen. I'm like ah, I don't think so. Um, he also did a review on uh, Xeno Crisis. I've ran, I don't know. I haven't really ranted and raving about. Love that game. I, I love the combination of Smash TV with the Aliens theme on top of it. It's always been it's always been good to me. And you can literally play that thing on fucking anything imaginable. I even have it on Dreamcast for God's sake. And it, somehow it's intuitive on no matter what system they threw it on. But yeah. Yeah, that was a great re- that was a great review. I'm always been down for that. Um, Friday Night Arcade. He took a look at an unusual arcade machine called Space Gun or something like. It's I love how these arcades from the '90s are big, gigantic machines that play the most primitive games with one one gun, and the the TV thing is like way way past your point of field of view, so you can like barely see the screen. And the only the only one, one I remember other one playing like that was like Terminator or something, and I could never play those games because it's just so far away that like yeah the gameplay is simple but at a point the cursor on it's so small you can barely hit any, any of the enemies on screen to begin with but he actually said there was some strategy to the game too which I was surprised like you can't gun go guns blazing and everything like uh, I believe at the end of the game you're when you're actually shooting the boss or something like that. If you shoot the console around you, the entire base will explode. But if you just shoot, if you just keep your cursor on the enemy, you get a different ending. And I didn't even realize these types of games could have that, but apparently they can. So that was a pretty cool, cool video. Um, let's see here. Other than that, I did I did catch uh, Band of the Jedi's review for uh, WandaVision. I also just recently watched her one for uh, uh, was it Cherry as well with the Tom uh, Tom Holland movie. Mm-hmm. That I believe that took that took place in Cleveland, and I don't know. I wasn't too intrigued by that movie. Her review is good of it, but I don't really think I'm ever going to watch that movie. But um, I did like her take on WandaVision. I kind of feel the same way about some parts of it. I think there are parts that could have been done better. She liked the ending. I'm still not a fan of it or anything. But, yeah, solid review there. Uh, let's see what else. Anything else on here? Um... Uh, I found a diff- I found a pretty interesting one was um, a channel called Metal Jesus Rocks. He did a, a video about um, uh, certain PlayStation franchises he would want to see on the PlayStation 5, and some of them that I haven't thought about in years, like Jed Moto, and there's a few there's a few others on there. But yeah, I'm I'm always been interested in seeing what people would want to bring to that system and. I'm still on I'm still on the fence about getting one myself. There hasn't been a big banger I want to really check out yet. Um, then I, which is why it's good for me because the whole scalping situation. I don't care. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting till June maybe to get one with Ratchet and Clank. So that was a good video. And I think past that, yeah, not much. Not much, man. It was pretty slow week otherwise i haven't watched the complete history yet for slopes game room i'll have to watch that for next week for pac-man but yeah that's about it so i watched a few things <clears throat> only in japan uh, john dobb did a fascinating look at earthquakes largest earthquakes in japan's history namely uh and he talks about the scales in which earthquakes are measured in japan it's not on the richter scale like we do in the u.s at least it's not only done they also have a uh um, a, a graph, or not a graph, but, but a, a system that measures how much things move. And, and it, and it kind of gives you a, a far more horrifying idea of what an earthquake in Japan could actually look like. And he takes you to the earthquake center that they have in Tokyo. And uh, he's been in Japan for so long that he was actually part of the, uh, the 311 earthquake, which was on March 11, 2011. That was like one of the largest, most destructive earthquakes that, they, that the country had ever seen. So he talks about that. Oh, I remember that. I remember mm-hmm. that actually. That was that was featured in the Nintendo Story documentary thing where they act um, Nintendo actually was actually passing out um, stuff for like like feeding people and stuff like that during that during that tragedy because there was a lot of devastation, a lot of damage. It was like mm-hmm. I can't remember how many billions of dollars in property damage, but it was a lot. He also revealed that his uh, wife, who we hadn't known was pregnant, 
was pregnant and had given birth to a baby boy. So congratulations to him on that. Like that was as soon as I saw the nice. the, the the headline for the video, like my my world has changed completely. And he's smiling. I'm like, ah, oh, that motherfucker got, you know, is going to be a dad, isn't he? And then I watch the video. And he's like, yeah, you know, my wife just had a baby. I'm like, fucking telegraph the ending. <laughs> You clever bastard. No, it's not clever at all. It's terrible. Like, I knew this before I watched the video. Come on. Okay, I should say on the, on the nose then. A little too on the nose. Just predictable. That, that, that sword is predictable. Uh, I also saw a, a really fascinating video from Lazy Masquerade. He does a bunch of horror ch- uh, channel stuff. Uh, he, he kind of um, r- really disturbing on this one. He, he talked about this guy named Futaoshi... Matsunga, who's apparently a famous Japanese serial killer who never actually killed anyone but convinced his growing list of subordinates to do it themselves. And, like, Mm. he's apparently, like, the most despised man in the last 30-odd years in the country. So, like, if if you're a fan of true crime stuff, like, that one one definitely, I was like, oh, they did did the, the fuckery. Definitely the fuckery. Uh, mm-hmm. Punk Rock NBA had two really interesting videos. One's called uh, Not Punk, as in Why Don't I Talk About Punk. It, he's kind of already addressed it a few times, but this was definitely a, a nice refresher if you're new to the channel. And he also did one about uh, butt rock uh, coming back in, in form, so to speak. Now, the term butt rock may may not be something that uh, you recognize, but it's more or less the, the kind of bands or, or musical acts that are played on mainstream radio or on those rock channels where they play nothing but rock. It's like it's like those kinds of of, of oh, bands. Okay. Yeah, and now you understand the the, the terminology. Mm. And he did like you know like they're coming back. You know like there's a bunch of new bands and a bunch of new artists who are doing it. So like you know he, here's who they are and and why you should you know appreciate the fact that they're doing it. <laughs> so it was it was nice. And he's not a, a big fan of that genre of rock that that more cookie cutter kind of rock, but he does put it over in a nice way, and he does kind of put up, uh, put over the new talent and, you know, all the stuff that they're doing. So, like, if, if you're a fan of music, like, the Punk Rock NBA, I think, is the best music channel out there. So I would, I would def- definitely recommend that. Um, I think there was one more, but maybe not. Uh, so, yeah, anything else you want to talk about before we uh, close out the show? Um... Yeah, I, I, it is. It's a little bit gaming related. Um, I was, I was telling you the, yesterday. I was having trouble like with my Dreamcast. I was trying to play a Dreamcast game the other day, mm-hmm. and I've been getting these. I've been getting these retro uh, games from uh, Video Games Monthly recently, and I, I don't know what issue and a current issue can be with the Dreamcast that because I know you were you were having problems before with your PS4 to a degree, right? Mm-hmm. Like you were having some kind of like loading issues or something. So I um, I put the game in and um, the game's called Trick Style. It looked like a hoverboard type of game. It looked pretty cool. And I put it in. And I couldn't get past like the title card just to load it. And I'm like, so is there something wrong with this? I'm wrong with my Dreamcast. And I reloaded every single one of my Dreamcast games of various, you know, some are 3D, some are like pixels. They all have different technical uh, things to them, but they all seem to run fine. And I just, I didn't understand what was going on with it. And it turns out I grabbed the disc, take it out, look at it. There was a huge, um, there's a huge smudge right around the middle of the, um, uh, the, the disc or whatever that could have possibly done that. And I don't want to clean it or mess with it or anything, but it's just, it's just telling of like, you know, sometimes physical media just, man, even though I like it so much and especially with Dreamcast, Dreamcast is my, my, my top five systems, honestly. And especially for someone like me, great arcade games on that system, top notch stuff. And I was really looking forward to this. And it's just a telling time that maybe, maybe I need to get a new Dreamcast or, you know, maybe I can look into, I've heard it has some issue to do with the lens. Maybe I replaced the lens within it or something. I, I don't know where to really go with it. And I'm going to try to take it to maybe some retro shops and see if I can get it fixed or see if I, if it maybe works in their systems. Maybe it could be an import that I'm just not aware of, you know, anything. It might not even be a worthwhile game, but any game that, comes out for that system i want to at least give it an initial shot you know mm-hmm. 
And I just, I hope I can find it working. I did contact the company and they said that they can send me, if they have it, they'll send me another copy, but more than likely I'll get a different game. But I'm hoping I get it working because I want to see what it's capable of. But yeah, that's about it. All right. Well then that's it for the rest of the show. We are done ski. We'll see you guys next week for another edition of the podcast. You can go and find us on the website at realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. We're on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We're on Instagram at Real Nerd Corp. Twitch.tv backslash Real Nerd Corp. And search the YouTube by searching for Real Nerd Corp. For Matt, who can be found where? On uh, Twitch at Mnerd Corp. Same handle on Twitter. I'm Chad, which you can find on Twitter at Chad Nerd Corp. C-H-A-D-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. And on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. This has been the Nerd Corp. <clears throat> podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. And as always, remember to be, I don't know, I don't have an outro. Matt, say goodnight. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>